There are two ways in which the state taxes residents. The first is directly, and the second is indirectly. There are different types of direct, and indirect tax. Let us start off with the types of direct tax. Firstly, income tax. Income tax is imposed on persons, each person has an applicable tax rate that is applied to taxable income, with the exception of turnover tax, where tax is on turnover. The relevant tax rate is on a sliding scale. This means that, where someone earns more money, they pay a larger percentage, of their income, to SARS. Picture it as filling up a glass within a bucket, within a sink, within a pool, and so on. Money is represented by water. And the first glass represents the lowest tax rate. When you have more water than the glass can hold it will overflow, into the bucket. The bucket represents the higher tax rate, when it flows into the bucket it doesn't matter whether the bucket is one quarter full, or almost full. You will be taxed at the applicable rate. This then continues until the water starts filling up the pool. A company does not follow the same route but rather is taxed at a flat rate of 28% regardless. We will talk about the different ways in which a company can change this, so that they can lower the rate applicable at a later stage. The practical example of this is pay as you earn, also known as pay, y, e. We then have dividends withholding tax, which is a 20% tax that is withheld by a regulated intermediary on local dividends, declared and, accrued, or received. For example, if you own shares in company X, and the company shows a large profit that will mean that its preferential shareholders will receive 50,000 rand in dividends, the company will deduct 20% and thereafter you will receive 80% of the total amount, which is 40,000 rand. We then have capital gains tax. This is found to be very confusing to many, despite it actually being an easy concept. Capital gains tax is imposed on the gain made on the disposal, or deemed disposal, of capital assets. So, this means that when you sell an asset and you make a profit, you are taxed on a certain percentage of the profit. The taxable capital gain is incorporated into taxable income, to determine the applicable tax payable. This will be discussed in detail, at a later stage. We then have the unfortunate tax, called donations tax. This is where, despite your good intentions, you are taxed on any amount or asset valued above 100,000 rand. It is therefore defined as the tax imposed on a gratuitous disposal of an asset. Therefore, whether you want to give your brother 150,000 rand, or give your mother a house, you will be subject to donations tax. Next is transfer duty. Those who have bought a house, will be familiar with it. Transfer duty is the tax imposed on a legal transfer of fixed property, which is payable by the purchaser. It is normally included in the costs of transfer for the purchaser. As the saying goes, two things in life are certain. These are death, and taxes. The following applies to both. Our next type of direct tax is estate duty. Estate duty is a tax payable at death, or on the transfer of wealth. The deceased estate is liable for the tax on income, and not the heir, or legatee. This means that when someone passes away, all of the their assets, and liabilities are calculated, and where the value of the said estate is large enough, estate duty will be applied and added as an additional liability. Therefore, estate duty only applies to sufficiently large estates. More about wills, and estates at a later stage. Those are all of the direct types of taxes. Next is indirect tax. We first have value added tax, VAT. We are all very familiar with this type of tax. This is an indirect tax of 0%, or 15% levied on goods and services. It is a pretty simple concept at first, but it does get complicated for the VAT vendor themselves. We then have customs duty, which is the tax on imported goods. And lastly, we have excise duty. Most people know this as syntax. Excise duty is the tax on alcohol etc. So that's it for the types of taxes. Last but not least, a few key terms, that are used in the South African tax industry. 
The most common term is pay as you earn, also known as pay, y, e, a as you earn is merely a means of an employer, collecting tax, from an employee's remuneration. The pay as you earn collected, is a withholding of normal income tax, by the employer, who then pays it over to SARS, on behalf of the employee. When employees receive their salary, it will be net of income tax. In other words, the tax has already been paid. Another confusing term, to taxpayers is gross income. Gross income, is needed to calculate how much tax, is payable by you, as the taxpayer. It essentially forms the basis, of the income tax calculation. It is therefore important to understand, what amounts, form part, of your gross income. As per the Act, gross income is defined as, firstly, the total amount. This amount must be expressed, in South African currency. Secondly, it must be in cash, or otherwise. Cash and any benefits, that have been received, or that have accrued, must be included in gross income. An example of a benefit, would be fringe benefits, received by an employee of a company. Thirdly, it must be received by, or accrued to, or in favor of, such resident. This relates to the timing of the amount, and, in which tax year, an amount must be included in gross income. Fourthly, it excludes capital receipts, and accruals. For example, capital receipts, are subject to the capital gains tax rules, and are not subject to income tax rules. Lastly, it must specifically include certain amounts. This is an important part, of the definition. Often, people stop at step 4, and do not make sure that, the amount in question is income in nature and not capital in nature. This provision can make a capital amount, part of gross income, and not subject, to capital gain tax. It is important to know the above, because the onus, is on a taxpayer to prove that an amount, can be excluded, from gross income. If the taxpayer cannot provide evidence, to show, that an asset was acquired, as a capital asset, the proceeds resulting from the sale of that asset will be included in the taxpayer's gross income, to be taxed as normal income tax, instead of the application of a capital gain tax. The next term is capital. Capital, is not defined in the Act. More often than not, it is obvious when an asset, is capital, and not revenue. But where there is uncertainty, and clarity is required, the courts have relied on the golden rule, the intention of the taxpayer. Therefore, if you buy, and sell houses, to make a living, the income tax rules, will apply to you. Generally, trading stock, will form part of someone's gross income. Two very confusing terms are receipt, and, accrual. Amounts are included in gross income when they have been received by, or accrued to, the taxpayer, whichever happens first. If the amount has been beneficially received, there is a receipt for tax purposes, and there is no need to determine, if there has been an accrual. It is only when there is no receipt, that one needs to determine, whether there has been an accrual. For example, has it accrued to you, or, has it become due to you? An amount is accrued, when a person is unconditionally entitled, to an amount. Even if he has not yet, physically received the money, or, benefit. Lastly, I would like to discuss fringe benefits, and allowances. A fringe benefit, is a value, placed on either, the use of an asset, payments made by and or services provided by, the employer to, or, on behalf, of his employees, and, in some instances, anyone connected, to the employee, at time of employment. A fringe benefit does not necessarily represent, an amount received, directly by the employee. The value of the fringe benefit, that an employee receives from his employer, is included as gross income, for the employee's income tax calculations. Allowance, is a cash amount, given by the employer, to the employee, which forms part of the employee's income. This is an amount received by the employee, to generally spend on business expenses, related to his employment. These are allowances such as, car allowance and uniform allowance. That's it for today's episode, and I hope that it has helped in some way. Thank you so much for watching, please stay tuned for further episodes by subscribing to my channel.
Don't forget to like. Cheers.